Hey guys, to here uh, in Berthoud. This is Joshua with Peterson Electric. I uh, got a customer here that uh, was digging on Saturday, and um, she didn't even notice it, but her shovel arced. She just said that she saw a flash and everything went out in the basement. And I want to show you how this was actually done. I did turn this off, but I was sitting here literally welding with this back and forth with my gloves and a piece of bark, and I couldn't get the breaker to trip. That's called high impedance. This is an extension cord. My thought is they had a post light here with a photo eye on it to turn it on and off. But I'll show you what I think happened is that they actually report this maybe 15, 18 years ago or so. And when they report it, they drilled through. And I actually figured out which breaker it was. It was coming in under here. This is a tri-level house. I just had a bit of a hunch because I saw water on the other side. She said when she moved in, she had a little bit of water issue. So there's a little bit of water issue. Definitely there was some mice droppings. And that's the cord. This is an extension cord. And you can hear it. That thing has gotten crispy. Beyond the fact that I was trying to, sh trying to trip the breaker, I couldn't. It was a high impedance. So they came into this outlet right there. And that insulation is already toast. So it's not a UF rated cord for underground direct burial. Uh, it's a stranded, not a solid. And I'll show you how they actually tied that in, which makes a quick, makes great sense um, for why this circuit only tripped here because they came into this outlet. And that's where her water leak has been in the past. And you can see right back there, the drywall got a little bit there. So here in Colorado, during the time of what we call mud season, that's when you're going to see that because we get a lot of rain and a lot of extra snow in the springtime. Um, but for those of you who don't like arc fault breakers, and I've heard a lot of complaints, I tell you this though, this is proof this arc fault did a very good job. It was tripping, though it wasn't shorting out in the grass, it sensed the moisture. But when I went and put a normal breaker back in, that's the only circuit on right now, this breaker... I couldn't even get it to trip when I was trying to weld with it out there on that extension cord. Mind you, there's no ground because it was just a two wire cord. But between the neutral and the hot, I couldn't get this breaker to trip. Square DQO is a great panel. It's an older panel, but this original breaker was not tripping. This guy would not reset. So I knew it was a neutral issue because I had no ground going out that way. Plus you can disconnect your ground up here. Anyway, so I guess I would label this video, it's, it's 2017 in July, but I'd label the video arc faulting, um, detecting an outside source. It was no GFCI protection, not a dual action, but the arc fault sensed that arc that was going on. And then once that was kind of cleaned up, um, maybe there were still a couple strands barely touching out there in the moisture of the grass. But here's the thing, that high impedance, typically a breaker may not pick that up, but the arc fault did. So again, uh, kudos to the arc faults. I do think 210.12 uh, is a great code article. I think it's a hard thing to implement in homes, but I think it is a truly good safety device. Thanks.